your buddy Scalecraft here again. Today we got a great episode, everything you want to know about perfect handled screwdrivers, but we're afraid to ask. And you get to see the most awesome screwdriver ever made. Let's go check it out. Okay, so 1903, a gentleman by the name of William Ward invents this screwdriver. And uh, this screwdriver, you could see, it's a, it's a metal shaft and it encompasses the whole screwdriver and then it has two scales or you could say two inserts of wooden inserts and he invents this and uh they were termed uh the perfect handle screwdriver by the company uh later on that was producing them and uh, the perfect handle screwdrivers have become quite collectible over the few years uh especially r lately uh more people have uh have been really interested in these and they make great restoration projects although a lot of them are beat up the handles are loose or whatnot uh, my friend Joe from Joe's shop did a, a nice restoration on one but um, they've become uh, quite interesting over the past couple of years I have about two dozen of these and I'm gonna do a nice restoration on a couple of them but today's project is the nicest screwdriver ever made okay this here made by Irwin Company, and uh, this is a, like a perfect handle screwdriver, you can see, but this was incorporated, they uh, put these in with the Jeep, uh, the Jeep Toolkit in World War II, and this is just the screwdriver. I mean, the, the fit and finish, the feel, the length, the stoutness, see these were prone to bend, these screwdrivers, as you can see here, <laughs> this one here is bent, but you are not bending this without, you know, without really trying. And uh, this is the one we're going to work on today. The nicest screwdriver ever. I said it. Okay, here is our post wire brush evaluation. And if you look here, this is the coolest part of this. Look at this. Irwin, US of A. Huh? How cool is that? Okay, and then we also have, you know, we have the, the stamping marks. You know, when this thing was pressed down in the forge, you could see it left some edging around here and, you know, rough casting. But they, they ground this down nice and smooth. And you could see these things were pumped out. Anything made for the military was made super strong, but they didn't care about how it looked. And you could see by the, the jeweling, the faceting <laughs> of the grind marks back here, they probably just, you know, hit it, you know, whatever, and tossed it into a bin. We're going to try and get this nice and uh, nice and smooth. We're going to try and get this wood all cleaned out. They put a quick varnish on it or something. Uh, the edging here, we're going to try and end. We want to get this nice and... But this is the important part. We want to keep this here. Irwin US of A. And uh, the blade is in real good shape. So let's get started. Now because this screwdriver is already hardened and casting marks were very difficult to get out so I had to go with a little bit of uh, filing in addition to the belt sander to get the, uh, the marks down and out of there. After that we, uh, we went to with a finer belt and uh, we were very careful around the wood area because we didn't want to go across the grain and make it look like garbage in the end run. Okay, here's a quick tip when your your wheel, your buffing wheel starts to get caked up or whatever with a little bit of a uh, old compound. You take an old saw. This is uh, just an old saw that's uh, you know ready for the trash, but the you take I take usually the, the last few teeth on the saw and then touch it to the uh the wheel and that will, you know, get rid of a lot of the gunk that's in there. Let me show you. And that's it. And then your wheel is good to go. Now here we buffed the blade out to make sure that was all done before we started sanding the wood down. And again, we did it by hand and went with the grain and it took uh, a little while. Okay, we used a razor blade to scrape off a lot of this, uh, this, whatever they did, they dunked it in. That's what they did. They dunked it into the varnish or shellac or whatever it was, but it was on there. Like I was really in there. So it took, a, it took about 35 minutes to sand it down to get it to this point. Now what we're going to do is wipe it down with denatured alcohol and uh, put on some amber shellac. Now there's no real difference between amber and clear shellac except amber shellac has a little tone to it real nice. Okay, so let's get back to a little history on this. So, William Ward, 1903, invents the perfect handle screwdriver. Looks very much like this design here. Um, 
it is the uh, patent is picked up and produced by H.D. Smith. Now, H.D. Smith, who uh, produced chisels and, and other tools like that, high-quality tools, designs it, and um, they call it the perfect handle screwdriver. So, in actuality, the only people that made perfect handle screwdrivers were H.D. Smith. However, we tend to classify these, all these type screwdrivers that have the inserts, regardless of where they're made, as being perfect handle screwdrivers because they all look pretty much the same. A lot of companies made them. Irwin, Dunlap, uh, a lot of, uh, this one here is uh, Austrian, uh, made in Austria, you can see here. And uh, let me show you where it's uh, written there. See that made in Austria, and um, this one here is a Dunlap. So uh, a lot of them had the little hexagonal bottoms uh, right under the handle. Some of them had the smooth transition like this, more towards the original uh, Ward design. But basically, this is what these screwdrivers look like. Now, some of the slight variations you're going to see amongst these screwdrivers is on the bottom of a lot of the screwdrivers, you'll see a, a number here. And uh, this number, they say, could, uh, this is number five, it could mean the screw size, it could mean the set number, it doesn't uh, specify. Some of them had triangles here, I could see this one here, a triangle with a, a four inside. And um, other th variations included handle shapes, this one here has a slightly like a bottle shape design. Others had uh, rivets, this is a, a rivet that is on top of a washer so it's like a two-piece rivet and uh some of them had wider rivets like this one here is a much wider rivet which i prefer over the smaller rivets i, I even think they look better and then you had the wingtip design you could see here a very common design uh that would give you some added uh torque when you were turning the screw one other design variance is that you could see on the back of them, some of them were flattened out so that they can be used as a striking tool, almost like a, uh, a makeshift hammer. And the other ones were curved and rounded, it's more of a cabinet making, smoother, easier on the hand. So that has a lot of a difference. So let's get to why I think the most awesome screwdriver is, uh, is coming up right now. Okay, back to our current project. You know my favorite part. Remember what it looked like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Again, the most awesome screwdriver ever. Uh, we got the red in there for those of you <laughs> that have been saying I've been, I've been uh, slacking off on the red. Okay, here's what we did. Uh, first of all, we got four coats of shellac on here. Three amber, one clear. Uh, did up the back, got rid of the facets, made it nice and smooth, uh, took away all the forging marks that were on here, and made this as if it was a consumer grade uh, screwdriver. Left this all alone because it was just perfect to begin with, and uh, the only thing is it's going to be difficult to find a screw that this fits because it is quite wide. It's about uh, three-eighths of an inch, not too many flat screws, but this was made to use for prying, for, uh, you know, like I said, it was a, a military grade tool so you could use it for a lot of things and they disappeared from the kits a lot of times these were gone because as soon as you got your hand on one of these you wanted it and i could see why this is the most beautiful screwdriver i own just feels beautiful in the hand uh there's about three coats of wax on here after um after i did the polish and everything and uh and again the handle came out uh, real nice they use a regular hardwood probably like a uh just a typical hardwood, maybe a beech or something like that, or a maple, but it is uh, very hard. And with the amber shellac, it looks very much like the similar, what they did. So this is it. This is what I think the most awesome screwdriver in the world is. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the restoration. Hope you liked the screwdriver. Thanks very much. Take care. Hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.